These are very dishonest people, many of them, and we have some fine people, too, doing that. But there's a lot of very dishonest people. For instance, I just got back, as you know, from Singapore, where I met — where I met Kim Jong-un. And we had a great meeting, great chemistry. We got along really well, which is very important. They didn't want us to, but, they, you know, it's, like, nice to do that. And very interestingly, at first, everybody was amazed, amazed that we had the meeting. They couldn't believe it. The first 24 hours, they said, I can't believe it. You remember that a while ago? They said, they're going to meet. Then about a day later, they said, what's the big deal with the meeting? What's the big deal? In other words, their bosses said, you can't say that. But the beauty was this. So we had a meeting. It was an incredible success. And they said, the President gave away so much. He met with them. I said, what else? That was — I met. What am I supposed to do? I have to meet, right? He met. Now, sentence one says, a total denuclearization of North Korea. That's what we got back our hostages. And I didn't pay $1.8 billion to get back our hostages. We got back our great fallen heroes, the remains. In fact, today, already 200 have been sent back. They stopped shooting missiles over Japan. They stopped all nuclear testing. They stopped nuclear research. They stopped rocketry. They stopped everything that you'd want them to stop. And they blew up sites where they test and do the testing. And it was a great meeting, and Kim Jong-un will turn down, and I will tell, he will turn — Chairman Kim will turn that country into a great, successful country. And let me tell you — and let me tell you — let me tell you this. A year and a half ago, nobody thought that was possible. In fact, before I was elected, everybody assumed we were going to war. It would be a vicious war. In Seoul, you have 28 million people living 30 miles off the border. They don't even need nuclear weapons for that. They have thousands of cannons aiming right on top of Seoul. You could have lost millions and millions of people. But I got along with Kim Jong-un. I got along. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And these people, you remember, I said, I can't believe it. He's given away so much. You know what I gave away? A meeting. That was a meeting. And the fact that we do get along means we're safe. I'm not saying things can't happen. Things go wrong. Mistakes are made. Relationships get broken. But right now, you are so safe, and such a great event took place, and all over Asia. And all over Asia, they're celebrating the great achievement that we made, because you were the ones that put me here. We made — that we made — all over Asia, and really all over the world. And by the way, in our country, everybody knows what a great achievement this is, not only for us, but for North Korea, for South Korea, for Japan, for China for everybody. And I have to say, you know, you've been reading where I've been putting very large tariffs on China. Very, very large. We hit the 250 billion mark. But I want to say — and that we have to do that, because it has to be balanced. It has to be fair. It wasn't fair. China and President Xi has really helped us a lot at the border of North Korea, really helped us a lot. And he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. 
So you should be very proud of yourselves for what took place, because that was very close to war for many years. Many years. It was very, very close. And now we can have something where everybody is going to live in peace for a long period of time, and there will be denuclearization. So that's the real story. Thank you. That's the real story. So unemployment numbers are among the best in the history of our country. African-American unemployment